factors contributing to his heritage. Pichirin was born in 1889 in the rural north of Russia, where a mixed population of Komis and Russians lived peaceably together. He came endowed with great mental capacity, and in this land it could develop because education was generally respected there, as shown by the high level of literacy among the people. Sharing his father's itinerant life, Pitterim received whatever schooling that was available, but he learned still more from extensive reading over a wide range of topics. By his 21st year, he had written a few successful essays, as well as occasional poems on diverse topics. He, remained, uh, he retained manual skills learned during childhood and continued to employ them effectively well into his 70s. Shall I go on? Yes, please. A little bit more. Growing social problems and unrest increasingly ca captured his attention and ultimately his commitment to work in the social sciences. The earth-shattering events through which he lived, the horrors of World War I, the 1917 revolution, subsequent famine and other calamities, and his direct experience as a member of the provisional government in Petrograd only sharpened his interest in macrosociology, and by the time of his banishment in 1922, he had much experience of wars and revolutions. Pichirim left Russia a, as a fully trained academician, credited with an already impressive list of public published monographs and books. In Prague, he drafted a handwritten version of the Sociology of Revolution in Russian, to be succeeded by a definitive edition in English soon after he had emigrated to the United States. This was the first of several sociological subdisciplines that he added to the field. Personal Attributes in the United States, people meeting Sorokin at once noticed how distinct from them he seemed, somewhat perhaps as citizens in a small town of Maine regarded the subject in Edwin Arlington Robinson's poem, Flamand. The man Flamand from God knows where, with firm address and foreign air, with news of nations in his talk, and something royal in his walk with glint of iron in his eyes, but never doubt, nor yet surprise, appeared and stayed, and held his head, as won by kings accredited. Picture him certainly had a strong personality, and on meeting him, one of my former students said he could feel the electricity that seemed to surround him as he entered the room. For almost everyone, my father's manners were unfailingly respectful, courteous, and without any note of condensation, no matter to whom he was speaking or whatever station in life that person might have held, always provided that he was treated in a similar manner. All right. Four minutes. Let's stop here.